Hello, Afton High School. How is everybody doing today? So, wanted to go ahead and just kind of jump into uh, the next thing that we have going on here. So, we're going to be wrapping up uh, a little bit of linear equations because I realized there was just something I forgot to say in yesterday's lesson that I definitely wanted to talk about. And I think the last couple problems kind of pertain to that on the ascent uh, for linear equations. And then I want to move on to midpoint and distance. Hopefully, like I said, the midpoint and distance stuff, as soon as we do it, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, that's, that's easy. And you're just ready to move on. But there is one specific thing that I want to point out when it comes to distance that, again, I don't know what your previous math teachers have done, but something specifically for our class I want to make sure we have done. So uh, with wrapping up linear equations, so something, I don't want to look on that slide yet. Um, so something that I realized is that I didn't explain the purpose of linear equations. I didn't explain why linear equations are important. Because yeah, I mean, you've been doing them for, for three, four, I mean, uh, how many ever years? You've been dealing with graphic lines. And I don't know how many of your teachers have ever explained to you. I mean, you know what slope is. If I said what slope, you would go, oh, it's rise over run. Which I agree, that's not wrong. But what is slope? Like, what's the purpose of it? Why do we have this idea of slope? I will agree that, I mean, in math, Math, we use this word slope, and you never use it outside of math. You never, if you were like, oh yeah, we are, that, that's the slope. Like you would never use that term outside of a math class. But you use slope all the time. Anytime you're talking about a rate, anytime that you're talking about some kind of change in one thing over another, that's slope. A slope that you guys use every day. I was like, as most, I mean, you guys being juniors and seniors, if you can drive a car, speed is a slope. It's miles per hour. That's a slope. You're going this many miles in this, in this hour. That's what a slope is. That's what represents a slope. That's exactly what we're doing with a slope. So anytime you talk about a rate of change, that's a slope. So that's the thing that I wanted you guys to kind of understand is that we, we, in math, sometimes we, mathematicians, I mean, included, we get so ingrained in the idea of making sure that you know what this is, that sometimes we forget to tell you that, you know what, like, yeah, this word that we use in math class, it's great and important and super important in math, but outside of math, they don't use that term, but they do use the idea. So the idea of slope is all around us. Anytime, if you go to the store, price per ounce, that's a slope. If you use the word per, anytime you use the word per, I would almost say that's a slope. I mean, I, I, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head at this exact moment um, when you're using the word per, unless you're a cat, that you're not talking about slope. So with that in mind, I wanted to kind of look at a situation, look at an example here of how somebody might use uh, the idea of slope right here, and most specifically, use the idea of writing a linear equation. So right here, uh, a plumber charges a visit fee of $75. Now, that $75 might be slightly exaggerated, but that's a thing. Just for a plumber or an electrician or a lot of people in the service industry to just come at your house and look at that and go, yep, that's broken. It costs you money just to have them come look out, which it should, because again, they have to travel to your house, especially if it's at a certain time and all that stuff. I was like, I, I get that fee, like I said. So it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just that that is a thing. So uh, for the amount of time they work, they also charge uh, $50 an hour. So this again is a particular, this is for a particular thing. So write an equation to represent this where C is the cost and H is the number of hours they work. Now, if I just said, hey, they worked five hours, you could figure that out. You would say, oh, okay, well, they worked five hours, they made $50 uh, an hour, so that's $250, and then, yeah, their, their site visit is $75, so you just add those together. But we want to extrapolate that. We want to make this a general idea. We want to take that same idea that we just said, where I take um, their, their hourly rate times five, I said five in the example, and then we're going to add that fee. Well, that's a linear equation. Okay, the cost to you is going to equal their hourly fee 
times how many hours they work, and then the set fee that they make. So C equals 50 times H plus 75. Now, we pick some different variables, but this is slope intercept form. This is that same idea. And now what a plumber or anybody can do is now right away, if they know, hey, I worked this many hours, they just know they have to plug that in and they can write you your bill. So super easy for that, for that plumber to now tell you almost instantly how much they are going to make. Now, sometimes we don't write this down. Sometimes we just have this thought already in our head. We already have this equation in our head. So in math, what we're doing is we're formally writing down what we already think a lot of the times. And that's what a linear equation is. It's this thing that represents this idea. And that's what I really wanted you guys to kind of get out of that. And I realized in yesterday's video, again, I fell into that trap of I was stuck in making sure you guys had this concept down exactly that you got that I went over all the nuts and bolts that I didn't talk about the why. Why do we need these linear equations? And that's always a big thing. I was that annoying kid in school that, that the teacher hated. I, I have no clue why I honestly became a teacher. Uh, but I remember in seventh grade, I, I, uh, I was merciless in my math class. Because every time a teacher would teach us something, I would raise my hand and I'd go, when are we ever gonna need this? When are we ever gonna need this? When are we ever gonna need this? And unfortunately, she never had an answer for me. Um, she was a great teacher, but she just didn't have an answer to that. So when I decided I wanted to become a teacher, I wanted to make sure I can always tell you guys the why. Why would we need this? How would we use this? So if you ever have that question, if you go, well, why are we learning this? You're gonna get an answer that probably is a lot longer than you thought it was going to be. So with that in mind, like I said, I just wanted to kind of start there um, and then move on to the next topic. Because again, midpoint and distance, I don't think are gonna be difficult things for us. I think they're gonna be uh, pretty easy and basic. So if we have some two given points, any two given points here, let's just go ahead and call them X1 and y1 and x2 and y2. So again, just some points like this right here. So the midpoint formula is simply this. Now, I, I try to point this out to students because sometimes I ask for the midpoint and students give me a number. Well, that doesn't make sense. It's a midpoint. You should be giving me a point. You should be giving me some x sub m, y sub m. You should be giving me some x comma y for that midpoint. Now, that happens to equal simply x1 plus x2 divided by 2 comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. That's the midpoint formula. That's how we simply find the midpoint. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, I personally, I mean, yeah, I memorized these when I was younger, but I don't really think about these formulas anymore because all I do is I think about the idea. The midpoint, I'm finding the middle of these two points. I'm finding the middle of the x's and the middle of the y's. I'm just averaging, that's all that this is. Notice I add together the x's and I divide by two. I add together the y's and I divide by two. So if we understand that, then it's simply just that. I'm just gonna add and divide, add and divide and get some x coordinate and some y coordinate. Because I see a lot of students sometimes they'll put minuses in there. And I get it because when we're talking about lines and things like that, and even when we're talking about the distance formula, we see minus signs in there. But really that's not what's happening here. I'm averaging. Average I add and divide. That's what that's how you average. So that's again, that's personally how I deal with it. Now distance is a horse of a different beast. Uh, and I'm going to draw a quick picture here just to kind of explain where this formula comes from. So the distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. Now, if you, if you didn't pay attention, if you didn't really look at this, then you, this would just look like some googly guns. You're like, okay, some math machine just came up with this formula just seemingly randomly. Because we got square roots, and then we got squares, and then we got a plus, and then a minus, and we have, we have all these different things here. Um, 
So I get it. I completely understand where you might say, hey, how did, where did this come about? Where did this come about in this problem right here? Well, if I were to just go ahead and if I were to make a graph, again, just make some graph here, and I have two points. Okay, so this guy right here is just x1, y1. This guy here is just x2, y2. So again, just some points, and I want to figure out that distance here, which I'm going to go ahead, just like I did right there, on the capital D. Well, if we remember a little bit about geometry, the other class I teach, I would know that, hey, I could go ahead and if I just make that into a right triangle, there's some A there, there's some B there, I could use Pythagorean theorem because I know that uh, A squared plus B squared equals, now in this case it is C squared typically, but since we're talking about, since I just put a T there, we have that D squared. Okay, so now if we think about this, okay, well A, how would I figure out that A value right there? Well, this is my X's. Well, how far apart are my X's? Oh, well, that's just simply X2 minus X1. So I can replace that A with X2 minus X1. And that's squared. And then for my V's, this is the Y distance here. So again, I can do the same thing. I can just go ahead and say Y2 minus Y1. And you know what, typically, if we're trying to solve for something, how do I get rid of a square? Well, I can square root. Oh, forgot to square on that. I can square root that whole thing. Oh, look, we have the distance one. So this makes sense if we just think a little bit about geometry. So again, that was just me kind of explaining where this formula came from. So all these formulas make sense if you just think about them. If this was 1 comma 1 and this was 5 comma 5, well, it'd be 5 minus 1, be 4 away here, 4 away there. So again, they make sense if we think about it. And this is the alternate I try to point out to students, is that sometimes, you know what, if you're having trouble remembering the distance formula, just turn it into a right triangle. It's an alternate there. So let's go ahead, and I want you guys to find the midpoint at distance. Again, at this moment, I would say pause the video and try these on your own. Thanks for pausing. Let's go ahead and let's look at these right here. So if I want to find that midpoint, which I typically just abbreviate MP. Um, if I want to find that midpoint, again, I'm just going to average those x's. So 4 plus 8 divided by 2, average those y's, and we get 5 plus 2 divided by 2. And then when we do that math there, 12 divided by 2, we get 6. Uh, 7 divided by 2. I'm just going to leave it at 7 over 2. If you want to write 3.5 again, that's not wrong. Just why? Why do the extra steps? 7 over 2 is a perfectly acceptable way to write that. Now, for the distance, again, I'm going to have the square root of subtract the x's. 8 minus 4, 1 we squared. Subtract the y's. So 2 minus 5 quantity squared. Now here's where students who knew the formula, they might have this memorized, but this is where a lot of students tend to make their mistake. So 8 minus 4, we get 4, and then that's squared, and we end up with 16 plus. And then 2 minus 3 is negative 3. Now the problem is students type this into their calculator. And then they get this. Here's the problem. I want to make sure you know. Your calculator is dumb. It doesn't know what you mean. Okay? When you write this, most of the time I know, oh, I think you meant to say the negative 3 was squared. But when you type this into your calculator, it doesn't know that. It does the squared, and then it attaches the negative. Negative 3 squared is not negative 9. This is wrong. If your calculator says that, it's because your calculator is stupid. It's negative 3 squared. You would need parentheses. Negative 3 times negative 3. That gives me a positive 9. After I square these numbers, these should always be positive. 
If you get negatives, you messed up. And then 16 plus 9, square root of 25. Hey, well, that happens to be a perfect square. Nice. So we just know the distance here is 5. Now, we don't have to actually graph them. That's the nice thing. These numbers could get really, really big. And because of these formulas, I don't have to actually sit there and count anything out. So I want to go ahead. I want to do one more problem. There's a reason I want to do this one more problem. It's not because of the midpoint. Um, it's more so because of the distance. So but just find the midpoint distance. So again, pause. All right, thanks for pausing. Let's go ahead and let's do these problems here. So. We know, again, midpoint is simply negative 4 plus 2 over 2 and 5 plus 7 over 2. Uh, quick side note, it doesn't matter which one you call x1 and y1. It's just saying the x's and it's just saying the y's. That's all it is. It's just saying different, the different x and the different y. So, all right. So, that's negative 2 divided by 2. I get negative 1. 12 divided by 2, I get 6. That's the big one. Okay, again, wasn't worried about that. Distance, that's what I wanted to focus on. So the square root of 2 minus negative 4. So if you just wanted to right away change that to a plus 4, that's fine. It makes perfect sense to me. It's what I would do. It's what I did. Um, and then plus, uh, we're going to have 7 minus 5 quantity squared. So this is going to be 6 squared plus 2 squared. So I end up with 36 plus, I was jumping to the next thing, plus 4. Add those together. We get the square root of 40. Now, if you are running to your calculator, stop! Because you don't need your calculator. If you say the square root of 40, we talked about this yesterday. If you say the square root of 40 is 6.2, smack the calculator out of your hand. We only deal with exacts. There were a lot of decimal places when you typed in square root of 40 into your calculator. There was a lot of decimal places. Guess what? There's even more that your calculator isn't showing you. This is what we refer to as an irrational number. You cannot express this. It's not even possible to accurately express this as a decimal. There's no way. So since we only want to deal with exacts here, since that is the only thing that we are interested in, is saying that these are exact numbers, then here's the thing. For me in this class, I'm OK with the answer of square root of 40. You can stop right there. That's it. That is the actual, actual exact answer. Now, I do want to preface this, and we're going to get more into this in a later chapter. Square root of 40, unfortunately, is not simplified. For me, for the purposes of this class, for right now, for this chapter, I am ecstatic with the square root of 40. But this does simplify. And this would simplify to 2 square root of 10. That's what it simplifies to. Now, like I said, we will, in a couple chapters, talk about how to simplify that. You will know how to simplify that, and that will become the expectation of simplifying things like the square root of 40. I believe there is one problem on tonight's assignment that can be simplified. So with that note, like I said, maybe Google simplifying radicals or something like that to help you on that one. Later, like I said, yeah, we're going to talk about how to do that and simplify. If you had me for geometry, if you had, uh, if really, I mean, you should talk about simplifying square roots in algebra two, but I know we also talked about it in geometry. This should be something that you already know how to do, but I'm just saying right now, I'm not expecting you to do it. So that's just the big thing. So that's it. That's all I had on midpoint and distance. So. Um, again, if you the assignment for this, I believe, is titled Midpoint and Distance. Uh, it's already up on Math Excel. I, I started it, or I made it available. So uh, on that, if you have questions, do not hesitate to email me. I will bid you adieu. 
Until next time, stay safe out there after you.